Good morning and welcome to Facebook Live. My name is Lindy Smith and this morning I'm going to be talking to you about these little cakes in front of me. They were first published in my Mini Cakes Academy book, which I know some of you have got because the request for this Facebook Live post has come from a number of you. You want to know the tips behind how to create these little things. I absolutely loved creating them. They are was such fun and they're not something that you would do quickly but they're very very therapeutic and I know from talking to all sorts of you on uh, Facebook that for you cake decorating is all about bringing happiness to other people, happiness to yourself and it's a form of therapy and these cakes certainly are very therapeutic. Now if you've got any questions about these cakes please do pop on and say hello and Tell me when the world you are, that's really interesting to know. And if you want to know anything specific about these, then please do ask. I'm going to be talking to you about the inspiration and how to make them and a few tips as well to make your life easier. I'm going to start with the inspiration. Now, the one in the middle, which is the main uh, cake in the book, was inspired by my bubble hat. And I had it a few years ago, and as you can see, the little hearts here they correspond to the little hearts down here and I just love making it. Obviously not all of you might have uh, bubble hats like that one or you might not have anything in your house but of course the internet these days is full of inspiration. I've got some printed out here. I've got lots of others which I'm going to share with you which inspired me when I was doing these cakes. What you're going to need is some squared paper. Again you can print that off the internet got a few hellos already this morning. We've got Norma from Grimsby and we've got someone from Romania as well. Hello, good morning to you both. It's lovely to have you on here. I'm talking about my little mini cakes here. They're from my mini cake book, which I loved creating for you. I made it uh, quite a few years ago now, but they, the design still seemed quite fresh to me and I just love them. So inspiration, you are going to need some, obviously. So what I'm going to do is flip the camera in a moment and show you some inspiration. I'm also going to show you the products you need. There aren't very many for this, but one very important one is the embroidery grid embosser. Now, if I bring this into the camera, there you go, you can see it. Now, it's a patchwork cutter embosser, and we stock them on the Lindy's Cakes shop. So I will pop a link up afterwards so you can easily get hold of one of those. There aren't very many other things you need, but I'm going to flip the camera and show you in a moment. We've got hello, um, a hi from Bath from Sandy Clark, and oh, we've got Cape Town in South Africa. I, Anika, I think that's probably pronounced, but uh, apologies if I've got your pronunciation wrong there. It's very hard with some of these international names, but I do my best. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you some of the inspiration that I used to create this one over here. And then I'm going to talk you through how to transfer ideas onto a grid paper and then how to get them onto your cake as well. Okay, so bear with me whilst I just flip this over. Right. It's not flipping. It is flipping. Here we go. Right, so you'll need some inspiration. As I say, you can get lots on the internet. You can get ones that are already on a grid. Now, I think of this technique, it's a bit like cross stitch or perhaps um, knitting. You need to be able to count, and I think that will come obvious in a little while. So just some ideas and inspiration. If you don't want to do too much piping, you need a design that doesn't have as many dots. So this one on the left here, you wouldn't need quite so many, it wouldn't take you as long. The one on the right would take you a lot longer. We've got hello from Pakistan and Seema from India. It's lovely to have lots of people from around the world joining me this morning. And this one I absolutely adore. I think it's the colours that really appeal to me, but that would take quite a lot of work because most of it is a colour, therefore most of it is uh, piped. And then we've got some other examples here. Now this is obviously a knitted one. And other examples, again, you can see it's on a grid. If I zoom in, you can see that it's on a grid. And then go down this one. This is another one it's very similar to my, uh, the one that was in the centre that I was showing you, the one from my book. And we've got other examples down here and more over here. So hopefully this gives you an idea of what you're looking for when you're 
are designing your own pattern. So the next thing you're going to need is some colouring pencils. Now I've got some of mine here and a tip here is to also to find yourself a pencil sharpener because there's nothing worse than when the lead breaks and you need to keep colouring. So a pencil sharpener and some colours of your choice and then you'll need to start experimenting on a grid. So you can see what I've been doing here. Now this is one experiment I was doing with different patterns and see how they work together. I then changed that. Can you see I've changed the order? So I put moved the hearts down to the bottom and then moved the uh, line of dots upwards. So you can experiment. You don't have to colour a whole band. As you can see, I've just done a little bit because this is a repeat pattern. Now the other example of my cakes that I showed you is, and this was my original drawings and as you can see again I haven't done the whole pattern but I've done the repeat so basically it's this pattern that's repeated again and again and if I zoom in you will see how I've done the counting counting is as I said is very very important so to do this technique you've got to be able to count well I guess most of you can so you also need to be patient of course because counting takes time the other thing you'll notice here is that I've actually mixed my royal icing to match my pencil marks I don't know if the camera will focus but the little dots on here are green and pink so that I can actually match. Uh, I tried to match my pencil marks. So there we go. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is show you uh, about the embroidery um, grid, how you emboss that. But first of all, I'm going to zoom in on this little section here. Now this uh, is like a template to find out how many squares you need because obviously you need to design a pattern with a certain number of squares. So what I do is I pick that up, pick a small one, pick it up against my cake and count how many squares I will need. I will then pop it down onto my template. So if I bring this, oops, sorry about that, bring this in and pop that onto there, you will see that they match, but it's not the full length of the grid. It's just a certain number. And I think I've written down 32 squares here, but I'm not sure. You'll have to look at the instructions in the book how many squares it was. I can't remember. But it's all about counting. OK, so I'm going to pop my camera up onto the stand and show you how I've embossed the paste. And I'm going to zoom over and also show you as I go what else you'll need. You'll need some piping tubes. This is a number one. You can do it with just uh, the icing in a piping bag, but I found it easier using number one because everything's more consistent. You'll need a palette knife, a craft knife. It helps to have some spacers. This is one of mine, as you can see. They're one millimeter spacers and obviously the embroidery grid. So I'm just gonna pop that there onto my stand. Now, as I said, it's important to roll out the paste between the spacers. And this is because you want the paste to be all the same thickness because when you press down using the grid, you don't want any um, bits to be more embossed or less embossed, if that makes sense. Okay, and so I've done this section here, as you can see. I've then lined the grid up and placed it in place here. I'm then going to press down. Now, if you press down just using the handle, what I found was that it uh, doesn't emboss all over uh, the paste evenly. So what I found, it's best just to press down on the embosser itself like that, just all over. Now you might be wondering what sort of paste I've got here. This paste um, here is actually modelling paste because I need to be able to pick it up so that it doesn't distort and wrap it around my cake. Now the modelling paste I use is 225 grams, which is 8 ounces of sugar paste, to approximately 1 teaspoon of gum. And I tend to use gum track and count, but you can use CMC or Tylos if you prefer. Now the big tip here is when you roll out your paste is to let it, uh, just leave it for a few seconds or so to just firm up a little bit before putting the grid on. Because what you don't want to happen is when we take this grid off is that the paste all gets stuck inside the grid. You could, of course, use a little bit of corn flour, but I find that I don't like to do that because you can get, you know, it can, it can get a little bit of a residue on the on the cake on the paste itself so I tend to just let it dry for a few seconds and then emboss. Now I'm going to lift this 
Now, you can just lift it with a handle, but actually I found it's easier if you just get one end and then lift it like so. Okay. And then what you do, you keep doing that until you've got enough to go right around your cake. Now, I've been doing this on mini cakes, but obviously you might be doing it on much larger cakes. So you need to make a strip that is the right a length that will go right around the circumference of your cake. You then need to cut, obviously, I'm not going to do this on camera, but you need to cut a line uh, along the grid so it's the right number high. So you do it the right number and then you make it into a nice rectangle. Again, I would let that rest for a few minutes to harden up because when you lift it, what you don't want is to stretch it. If I bring this bit in here and you see there's quite a bit of... Um, it's not going to stretch out of shape, although when I lifted it initially it did here, but this was just my um, example. Okay, so what I'm going to do is give you a, a nice close-up view of what I've piped, because I'm not going to demonstrate piping today, because I've done that before, and I can send you a link if you would like uh, to the piping and how to mix a royal icing. Vicky says, hi, she's managed to catch me live. Um but it all seems to be blurred. Oh, I hope it's not blurred. That could mean that the connection's not strong enough. Sometimes the internet here plays tricks on me, unfortunately. But I will have to look, view it back and have another look. Okay, so this, hopefully you can see this, Vicky. It is um, the cake that I showed everyone earlier. And I'm just going to zoom in, hopefully, and you can see the pattern, how it works. Okay, from my end it looks nice and focused, but I hope it is your end too. Okay, I'm going to now move on to this one. This was the original one. It's a little bit dusty and a bit worse for wear, but you get the idea. You can see the detail now. And now I'm going to whiz over to this one. This one's partly done, so you can see how the pattern's built up. Now a tip for, for piping the hearts here is to do the outline first, and then, as you can see here, to do every other dot because what you don't want to do when you're piping is for one dot to merge into another. You want them to be unique and individual. So I pipe it like that, and then once that's dried, I would go back to these dots and fill in all the spaces. And you see like that. And Nadine says it's not blurry her end, and Jenny says she's coming through fine in North Wales. Thank you for telling me, it's good to know. I never know until I watch it back whether I'm blurry or whether the internet's uh, failed me, which is a great shame sometimes. So I'll give you another zoom in on that one. And in case it was blurry your end, there we are. Right, I'm going to flip the camera and if you've got any more questions, then please do let me know. And I will do my best to answer them. Okay, hold on, we're going to flip. Right, there we are, back to me now. Uh, we've got lots of hellos and highs coming in. It's lovely that you're all with me today. Uh, Vicky says, still nothing happening. Uh, it may be your end, Vicky, I think. Who knows? I will watch back and see. And, you could, and I, what I will do is pop this up as a video that you can watch on Facebook uh, another time. Provided it's not too blurry, of course. I always like to check it first. I hope those of you that requested this, that helps you understand a little bit more about how the decoration works on this cake. As I said, I will pop links up to the embroidery grid and I will pop a link up to the piping with the royal icing as well, where I give you a recipe. It's a blog post that has a video as well. Uh, how to uh, mix the royal icing, how to paddle it, to get it the right consistency and also how to pipe the dots as well. It's a great technique to do. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And you know, because I've looked back at this, I've really feel that I'd like to do a nice big cake using this technique. This, I'll bring this in, this particular design I think is absolutely gorgeous and I can see that going round a tier of a, a tall cake. I think it would be absolutely stunning. So, you know, watch out. I might be uh, making that sometime soon. We'll have to see, won't we? <laughs> Thank you all for being on here with me today. If you've got requests for future Facebook Lives, then please do ask and I will add it to the ever-growing list. And the more people ask me to do specific things, the more I'm likely I am to, to pop on and talk about specific cakes or specific techniques. 
and I say this one was certainly asked for by quite a number of people I'll bring them back in you can see there we go so I hope that's demystify them a little bit and it will give you the encouragement to have a go yourselves I say very therapeutic lovely just to sit back and while away a few hours doing something you really enjoy goodbye until next time thank you for joining me